Ever since I bought this 99 step side Silverado a few weeks ago, there has been one modification that I have been dying to do. So that's going to be the first thing that we take care of on the step side build. And depending on who you ask, well, we're actually going to be ruining this truck and rendering it completely useless because in most people's eyes, the only way to modify the suspension on a four wheel drive truck is to lift it up in the air and put big old giant mud tires on it. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I actually, well, I don't have a lifted truck. I have a leveled truck and I appreciate how they look. And sure, if you do a lot of off-roading or mall crawling, a lifted truck, it looks cool. Don't get me wrong, but that's just not the way that I like to roll. I like to have my trucks for the most part lowered down to the ground. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. And believe it or not, this is not the first time that I've lowered or ruined, depending on which way you look at it, a four wheel drive truck. The first one was my 96 extended cab. I think this was back in 2014. Uh, I lowered it down to the ground and my plan was to convert it to all wheel drive, although that plan never materialized on my own truck. But the next four wheel drive that I lowered, we actually made that happen. We took an 88 single cab short box. It was a red truck and I'll put a link for the video up in the corner here. This was something we did at my last job. Uh, we lowered it, converted it to all wheel drive and that truck was a whole lot of fun. But both, both of the four wheel drive trucks that I have dropped were OBS or GMT 400 Chevy trucks. And I haven't done one yet to a GMT 800 or the 99 to 07 body style. Although for the most part, a lot of the principles are the same, but you will use a few slightly different parts depending on which generation of Chevy truck that you drop. And you can do this from 88 all the way up until well, basically a brand new truck if you want it. So let's talk parts. Over here on the table, we have most of the stuff that we're going to be using today. And the first thing that we're going to be dealing with are these new longer U-bolts right here. And the reason why we have, I'm sorry, shorter U-bolts, not longer, is because there is a two inch lift block that's between the leaf spring and the axle from the factory on all four wheel drive uh, 99 to 07 trucks. And so we can just take that out to get a two inch drop right away. And it doesn't really cost us anything other than the cost of some new U-bolts. I think these are like 20 bucks a pair. Um, so shorter U-bolts because the stock ones just don't have enough thread on there to get rid of the block. The second thing that we're going to be installing out back is a longer shackle. And the reason why a longer shackle lowers the truck is because the back of the leaf spring hangs off of it. And this shackle, I believe, is about four inches longer than the stock one, which will actually net us a two inch additional drop because you know, the leaf or the axle is mounted exactly halfway up on the leaf spring. And if you only, you know, raise the back four inches, it'll drop the middle two inches, kind of basic geometry stuff. So anyway, uh, today we're going four inches lower in the back, although in the future, we probably are going to be going a little bit lower than four inches out back. But today we're just getting started. I don't have new wheels and tires yet. So um, four inches out back. Out front, this is what I'm going to be working with. This is actually a stock torsion bar key from a 2500 HD truck uh, anywhere between 2001 and 2010. And these are what GM considers a purple torsion bar key. They use different color codes to indicate the clocking on the uh, this little hole that's broached inside the key. And they actually, when they were brand new, it's all faded now, but they originally put a little purple stripe of paint on here just to kind of keep track of what's what. So a purple 2500 HD key acts as a drop key on a, I mean anything, 88 and up Chevy truck that uses torsion bars on the four wheel drive. I know the later model trucks, they went to a coilover slash strut assembly, but if you got torsion bars, find a purple key, 2500 HD, it'll lower the front. You can also buy aftermarket drop keys, but they're pretty much all the same thing. And I just had these left over from when I did a leveling kit on a 2500 HD truck. So they're free, I have them. And the next part, um, this is something I actually can't use today, but this was donated by a viewer. This is from Vinny. So first of all, thank you, man. I really appreciate you donating the drop spindles because whenever I do get my bigger wheels, that'll be the next part that we're gonna be installing. Um, the drop keys by themselves, these will get, depending on how you adjust them with the adjuster bolt, this will get us about two inches of drop and these will get us two more inches. So we'll have today we're doing two, four between the key, the removing of the blocks and the longer shackles. And then I'll probably install a drop hanger up front along with the drop spindle in the future. Um, and then we'll do, that'll be like about a four, six drop in total. Um, also, one thing to note on the drop spindles, if you guys are going to go that route, you do need to have larger wheels because of the way that they move the, the hub mount up. It does increase the diameter or the, the spacing in here. So you will need a minimum of 17 inch wheels. 
and right now we are still rocking the stock 16s. They got pretty decent tires on them, so I'll probably run these for a little while, but I am looking around. I think, I mean, I know they're a little bit overdone, but I know those Snowflake 20 inch GMC wheels, they look awesome. And so I think that's what I like to put on here. Uh, but anyway, that's a future date. Today, let's get started out back by removing those lift blocks. All right, lift blocks are out. We have the axle bolted back up to the springs and that's the first two inches of the drop complete. I will put the part number that I used up on the screen here. I can't remember where I got them from, but you can also actually buy from your GM dealer stock two-wheel drive leaf spring U-bolts from the back of a same year truck because the two-wheel drives just did not have that lift block in there from the uh, 99 to 07 trucks. I think actually I had a I had a 2010 truck for a while and I think that was a two wheel drive and I'm pretty sure it had a lift block in there. So um, just kind of double check whatever year truck you have. But like I said, I provided the part number that I used and factory, say 2001 Silverado, two wheel drive, rear U-bolts will also work. Um, installation was very straightforward. Actually, it's more of a removal than an installation, but now we got everything put back together. Um, I guess it's worth mentioning that if your truck is like from a northeast climate where it rusts a lot, these bottom plates can be completely rusted through. Sometimes I've even seen the axle tube will rust through. So just kind of keep an eye on that, but that's what it looks like. Just took the two inch block out. And now we are ready to move on to the drop shackles, which it does take a little bit more work to install. Uh, I think per side, I've got like 10 minutes on each lift block. So that's really, really simple to put in. Um, the drop shackles, though, that is going to take a little bit of time. I do have to take the trailer hitch off because the bottom bolts, you have to back out and they would interfere with the side of the trailer hitch. And then I'm also going to get rid of the exhaust that I have on here. Not the whole thing, but I'm just going to, I'm pretty sure just kind of chop the tailpipes off right back there behind the muffler. Uh, the way that they ran the pipes, it makes it very difficult to access the, well, first of all, it's below the trailer hitch. Second of all, they're rusted. The hangers are missing. And then, um, if I have to take the bed off, these just get in the way. And I don't, um, speaking of the bed, I don't think I'll have to take it off. It all depends on if that lower bolt is rusted in uh, because the shackles have like a little sleeve down there. And I have seen where the bolt will rust and seize up into there. And you just need to get a hammer on there and drive it out. But you can't do that because, well, the bed side of the truck. So anyway, um, I'm hoping I don't have to take the bed off. But if I do, not a huge deal. It's just like eight bolts, you know, a couple of screws and some plugs and it'll lift right off. But I'm hoping we don't have to do that. So now let's move on to the drop shackles. <laughs>
So I got lucky on three out of the four bolts. They were able to loosen up and they weren't seized in the metal sleeve or anything like that. But we did have one, this lower guy right here, this is rusted into the lower leaf spring sleeve and there's just no way to get it out. The bed side, when the bed is on, it comes down to like here and it's probably like two and a half inches away from the head of the bolt. So there's just not enough room to like swing a big hammer in here to drive that bolt out. And that's the only way I can think of right now to get this guy out, just swing a big hammer. And with the bed out of the way, I figure, you know what, I've got tons of room and it's really not that big of a deal. In fact, it took me like 15 to 20 minutes to get the bed off. I did have to deal with that heavy fiberglass tonneau cover thing. That was kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but that being said, I am now able to easily access the bump stops. I think I'm going to take that bracket off. You can see it's bolted onto the frame in two places, but there is one more hole in the center of the frame right there. So I can easily take that bracket out and that'll get me probably two inches and then it'll maybe just cut like the bottom ridge off the bump stop. Um, so that'll be put back together. Oh, and the exhaust. Now that the bed is off, I can easily weld the little turn down things onto the exhaust because now I have easy access to the top there. And I'll check out that big massive crack on the end of the muffler. That's a V-Force. Never really heard of those guys before, but uh, we're just going to leave that exhaust on there with the turn downs for maybe like a month until I get all the supplies, you know, the headers and the builder's kit for the rest. So I just chopped these two sections out of the old tailpipes and I figured they'll make a pretty good temporary turn down. I'll just have to weld a hanger in there so I can support the back of the muffler from that factory hanger right there. So anyway, yeah, uh, we pulled the bed off. Kind of sucks. I wish I didn't have to do it, but now it actually is going to make life a whole lot easier. All right, I'll admit that was quite a bit more work than I was originally intending just to put in a set of drop shackles. But uh, now you can see why we had to take the bed off just because it's so much work and you don't really have any space to do it with the bed on the truck. In fact, this job would have been impossible if I could not have taken the bed off. Now I did have to cut the shackle in half because I just, I drove the bolt back basically as hard as I could and it would not come out of the inside of that sleeve. There's just so much rust in there. I got the bolt like halfway out, but it just kind of stopped and froze up. And then you can kind of see, I had to just chop the bolt in half basically. Um, that's the end of the bolt just kind of mushroomed over because we were hitting it so hard. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's what's left of the shackle there. And if I ever want to return the truck to stock, I do have a, a couple other sets of shackles just from things I've taken off. Or you can even buy them brand new, a stock height shackle for 
next to nothing. But anyway, uh, this is what the drop shackles look like when they're in there. I happen to have another bolt just in the little bolt bin I've got here, so that's perfect. All the other three ones came out with just minimal persuasion, so we're happy, we're good. Uh, I did take a quick measurement though. Uh, originally, this is listed as a two inch drop shackle, which means it would have to be four inches longer than the other one. It's like three and a half inches longer, which puts it like, what, one and five eighths of an inch, a little more than one and a half. Um, how does that math work out? Anyway, um, but yeah, so it's about, I think I figured it's a little less than two inch to drop, maybe inch and three quarter to inch and a half, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, anyhow, bump stops. This little bracket simply bolts onto the frame and the bump stop bolts onto that. And you can kind of see that one little offset hole right over here that has just like sort of an anti-rotation thing on it. But luckily the frame is drilled to accept that same exact tab. So it bolts right in because I'm sure on the two wheel drive trucks, the bump stop was bolted just there. Um, and the exhaust, finally, we got that just kind of welded on there. They're all cattywampus, but I wanted to have that one kind of pointed a little bit away from the shock absorber. And I didn't cut the ends square with a sawzall. I didn't really care to. I just wanted to have some sort of a turn down on there. Uh, welded up the crack in the muffler. That was kind of a pain because of how thin and rusty it was. And always have some sort of a hanger on the rear end of your system. Um, yeah, anyway, that is all the work that we have gone through. And now we are ready to put the bed back on the truck. Um, the question of shocks probably will come up. I don't know how close they are going to be to the bottom of their travel. I think they'll be okay. Um, but eventually we'll replace them with actual proper drop shocks. But for now, we're just going to send it. I think they'll be fine. So bed goes back on. back end is fully put back together. The front is like half done. I have the final side removed. And I just wanted to show you guys the differences between the two torsion bar keys, just to kind of illustrate how a torsion bar key is gonna either raise or lower the front end of your truck. Now remember, the keys that I'm installing are from a 2001 to 2010 2500 HD, and it is the GM code purple for whatever reason. I don't have the GM part number, but I can probably look it up and put it on the screen if you guys want to buy them directly from GM, or you can buy, once again, an aftermarket torsion bar lowering key that'll do the same exact thing. But here we have the purple key and we have the stock key. And if you put the purple one on top and if you line up the hex kind of like that, you can see the purple key is quite a bit higher. So if you turn it down like this and have it indexed in the same relative position that it is in the cross member, you can see how it'll be lower because when you adjust the bolt up like this, that's how you lift the front end. Or if you lower it like this, well, that's how you lower the suspension. So this guy right here, because it's clocked differently in this spot right here, it'll lower the front end. So we'll get that back in the truck. Um, if you're gonna do this, please use the proper tool. You know, you can use a, I mean, I, I will admit, I have used the old two-jaw 50-ton puller trick, which works, but it is a little bit sketchy. I much prefer having the proper torsion bar removal tool, if you have one. Um, just once again, this is a safety thing. You don't want your fingers to get chopped off because a torsion bar just kind of suddenly comes loose. So anyway, um, that's my safety tip for the day. We're almost done with this job, so we'll get back to work.
So I took a bunch of measurements before we did any work and then I took some measurements afterwards and this is kind of what we've wound up with. We went down two and three eighths of an inch average on the front and three inches down out back. And that's just measuring from the lip of the fender right here, straight down through the center of the tire and then to the flat spot on the ground. And I was hoping for like a two four drop, but I actually measured the lift block that we pulled out. That was like a little bit less than two inches and the drop shackle did, you know, a lot less than two inches. So two, three drop, whatever you want to call it. The truck does look quite a bit better, I think. Um, probably looks kind of like a stock two wheel drive. I don't remember what ugly truck looked like, but uh, we've still got plenty of clearance for these tires. These are 265, 75. 16s and whenever I do lower it more I will go with a larger wheel and a shorter tire but like I said I kind of like how it looks and it takes a little bit away of that kind of four-wheel drive look but four-wheel drive still functions perfectly and I can't wait to get some snow this winter to check this thing out and see how it does you know racing around in the snow or whatever um, not that we're really going to race it but it's just fun to drive in the snow with a low four-wheel drive truck a um, few things I have left to do, I probably need to put new shocks all the way around, trim the bump stops up front, that's one thing I haven't got to yet. Get an alignment, that's one thing that's probably pretty critical. And then in the future we are going to be dropping this further, I'm not sure if I'm going to go with a flip kit out back or if I'm just going to go with a drop hanger that bolts onto the frame. This I believe uses the same bolt on hanger that the two wheel drive trucks do. So. Um, I think I'm actually, maybe what I'll do is I'm going to put a flip kit on ugly trucks so I can put some cal tracks on it. And then I might take those drop hangers and put them on here when I put the drop spindles up front. I think that'll be a pretty good height overall. So, um, you guys got that to look forward to. Uh, I do want to say thank you for watching all the way to the end. I'll put some pictures up or some footage up on the screen here so you guys can see the finished product outside. Um, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, click the like button as well. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the new stance of the four wheel drive. And especially let me know if you think I've ruined it because I'd wager probably 50% of you guys would have preferred this to be lifted, but what are you going to do? Thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you next time.